yeah, it's a very unfortunate word uh, to use, but. Um Hi guys, I'm in the village of Buckland, uh, part of the Mole Valley district uh, between Dorking and Rygate in Surrey. Obviously you can hear the busy A25 um, in the background. Buckland, um, not in its present pronunciation, was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086, as a lot of these old villages were. Probably very, 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 very small hamlets back then. Just want to show you around, tell you a little bit about the um, local legend, but that's a little later on. It's gone a bit overcast, unfortunately, which is a bit crap. It is November, isn't it? So, Slough Lane. Nice house, 1878. Birds and that's right in the top of the tree. I've said this before, it's interesting, as people are driving on the A25, going down to wherever they're going, going down to Dorking or Rygate, you just drive through here, not knowing what's here, it's a lovely little village. It's such a shame because the peace and tranquility is constantly um, by the noise of the traffic but it's the main route so what can you do there's so many pheasants around um, from the Watner estate nearby the old Watner estate but they just fly off or uh, run off sorry really quickly so you can never photograph them or get them on camera there's an old windmill uh, in Buckland, but I don't know where it is. I think it was built around sort of the 1860s, and because uh, it was off road and uh, in disrespect repair, no one really noticed it was even there for for many number of years until it was renovated in the 1990s. But I don't know where it is, and I think it's only open on sort of selected days and weekends and that kind of thing, which is a shame. I'm going to go back over the road now, and I'm going to show you the church. This is St Mary the Virgin Church, built in 1380 and renovated in 1860. Victorians again. Just went to a garden, he said uh, it's open, so let's, let's go and have a look. What an incredible old church. Very dark in here, that's why I've got good light on the uh, camera. Well, wonderful. You drive past it and you see it on the A25 but people will probably stop to think, to pop in and have a look, but everyone's rushing about doing everything these days, aren't they? Churches, even if you're not religious like me, you know, it's a great place to come in and sort of just gather your thoughts, meditate. A very, very quiet and calming atmosphere. 
which leads me to think why are ancient uh, religious sites or sacred sites built or constructed where they are was there something about the land or who knows I always wonder why things are built where they are in ancient times and obviously everything's superseded so modern buildings are built over those old sites and like churches and cathedrals yeah it's interesting interesting I've been talking to a gardener who uh, gave me some interesting information that he said that the original church they think was actually just down the road where the garage is. Also these old stables here are being converted into flats except for the middle one. So a lovely place to live. There's the old manor behind us and that's also going to be, uh, or I think already are flats. Yeah there already are flats. Buckland also has a river not too far away called uh, Shag Brook and <laughs> yeah and uh, that contributes to a legend uh, the legend of Buckland Shag now Buckland Shag was supposed to be a water creature that lived by this great stone and would lure people off the coaching road and devour them now I love old folklore absolutely love old folklore it's quite a famous story in these parts in these parts isn't it me um, but yeah the Buckland Shag is a very unfortunate name a great book the Surrey Village book and it describes uh, a little bit more detail about the um, Buckland Shag um, uh, was known as a Buckland Shag lived near a, st uh, a stone by a stream now an article in the Gentleman's Magazine of 1827 says the road from Rygate to Dorking leads through a lonely lane of considerable length into the village of Buckland in the most obscure part of this lane, a little stream of beautifully clear water crosses the way. By the side of this very stream laid a large stone for I not know how many years, perhaps for centuries. Now that's apparently where the apparition lived. Okay. Now the stone was actually removed in 1757 and that's when all the uh, stories and tales stopped. So uh, whether it's true or not, who knows? Of course it's not. But it's a great little tale anyway. A legend of Buckland Shag. One little instrument, a gentleman called Thomas Delander drew his sword uh, actually in the church ground, which you weren't supposed to do, and he ended up in the D uh, Assizes Court. Um, what happened to him, we don't know, but um, yeah, he just didn't do that back in the day. I think this was probably back in the 1600s, maybe 1700s. Interesting little PS to the Buckland Shag story. Um, it's been revived by a local group of Morris men and they're called the Buckland Shag Morris Men. How cool is that? <laughs> I think they've got a Facebook group. Uh, that lovely gardener also told me that he, if you go down the road a little bit further, you can actually see where the uh, old road deviates off the A25. Obviously, the A25 wasn't always the A25. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely old church, this. A little pathway down here. I think there's some private dwellings just down the road. Well, thanks very much for joining us, guys, on this. Uh, lovely Saturday morning. Uh, if you've liked the video please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Sorry about the traffic, A25 can't be helped <laughs> but it's all good. But thanks very much for joining us again and we'll see you next time. Take care.